The Wales national football team Welsh, Tim Pell Senedlethal Cymru represents Wales in international football. It is controlled by the Football Association of Wales the governing body for football in Wales and the third oldest national football association in the world. Although part of the United Kingdom, Wales has always had a representative side that plays in major professional tournaments, though not in the Olympic Games, as the International Olympic Committee has always recognised United Kingdom representative sides. During their history, Wales have qualified for two major international tournaments. They reached the quarter-finals of the 1958 FIFA World Cup and reached the semi-finals of UEFA Euro 2016. Wales also progressed through UEFA Euro 1976 qualifying to the quarterfinal, which was played on a home and away leg basis, but they did not feature in the finals tournament. At all levels, including the youth teams, the Welsh national team draws players primarily from clubs in the English Football League system. The main professional Welsh clubs play in the English leagues, with some full-time and part-time professional clubs playing in the Welsh Football League system. History The early years Wales played its first competitive match on 25 March 1876 against Scotland in Glasgow, making it the third oldest international football team in the world. Although the Scots won the first fixture 4-0, a return match was planned in Wales the following year, and so it was that the first international football match on Welsh soil took place at the racecourse ground, Wrexham, on 5 March 1877. Scotland took the spoils winning 2-0. Wales's first match against England came in 1879, a 2-1 defeat at the Kennington Oval, London, and in 1882, Wales faced Ireland for the first time, winning 7-1 in Wrexham. The associations of the four home nations met in Manchester on 6 December 1882 to set down a set of worldwide rules. This meeting saw the establishment of the International Football Association Board IFAB to approve changes to the rules, a task the four associations still perform to this day. The 1883-84 season saw the formation of the British Home Championship, a tournament which was played annually between England, Scotland, Ireland and Wales, until 1983-84. Wales were champions on 12 occasions, winning outright seven times whilst sharing the title five times. The FAO became members of FIFA, world football's governing body, in 1906, but the relationship between FIFA and the British associations was fraught and the British nations withdrew from FIFA in 1928 in a dispute over payments to amateur players. As a result, Wales did not enter the first three FIFA World Cups. In 1932, Wales played host to the Republic of Ireland, the first time they played against a side from outside the four home nations. One year later, Wales played a match outside the United Kingdom for the first time when they travelled to Paris to play France national football team in a match drawn 1-1. After World War II, Wales, along with the other three home nations, rejoined FIFA in 1946 and took part in the qualifying rounds for the 1950 World Cup, the 1949-50 home championships being designated as a qualifying group. The top two teams were to qualify for the finals in Brazil, but Wales finished bottom of the group. Topic: 1958 World Cup. The 1950s were a golden age for Welsh football with stars such as Ivor Allchurch, Cliff Jones, Alf Sherwood, Jack Kelsey, Trevor Ford, Ronnie Burgess, Terry Medwin and John Charles. Wales made its only World Cup Finals tournament appearance in the 1958 edition in Sweden. However, their path to qualification was unusual. Having finished second to Czechoslovakia in qualifying Group 4, the golden generation of Welsh football managed by Jimmy Murphy seemed to have missed out on qualification, but the politics of the Middle East subsequently intervened. In the Asian, African qualifying zone, Egypt and Sudan had refused to play against Israel following the Suez Crisis, while Indonesia had insisted on meeting Israel on neutral ground. As a result, FIFA proclaimed Israel winners of their respective group. However, FIFA did not want a team to qualify for the World Cup finals without actually playing a match, and so lots were drawn of all the second-place teams in UEFA. 
Belgium were drawn out first but refused to participate, and so then Wales was drawn out and awarded a two-legged playoff match against Israel with a place in Sweden for the winners. Having defeated Israel 2–0 at the Ramat Gan Stadium and 2–0 at Ninian Park, Cardiff, Wales went through to a World Cup finals tournament for the first—and currently only—time. The strong Welsh squad made their mark in Sweden, drawing all the matches in their group against Hungary, Mexico and Sweden before defeating Hungary in a playoff match to reach the quarter-finals against Brazil. However, Wales's chances of victory against Brazil were hampered by an injury to John Charles that ruled him out of the match. Wales lost 1-0 with 17-year-old Pele scoring his first international goal. The goal made Pele the youngest World Cup goalscorer and Brazil went on to win the tournament. Wales's remarkable campaign in Sweden was the subject of the best-selling book When Pele Broke Our Hearts, Wales and the 1958 World Cup by Mario Risley, St David's Press which was published on the 40th anniversary of the World Cup and was also the inspiration for a BAFTA Cymru-nominated documentary. Topic: 1970s Wales had never qualified for the finals tournament of the UEFA European Championship since its inception in 1960. However, in 1976, the team managed by Mike Smith reached the last eight of the competition, having finished top of qualifying Group 2 ahead of Hungary, Austria and Luxembourg. Prior to 1980, only four countries qualified for the finals tournament, and Wales were drawn to play against the winners of Group 3—Yugoslavia — on a home and away basis match. Wales lost the first leg 2–0 in Zagreb and were eliminated from the competition following a 1–1 draw in a bad-tempered return leg at Ninian Park, Cardiff, which was marred by crowd trouble. This initially led to Wales's ban from the 1980 tournament. However, the ban was reduced on appeal to a four-year ban on qualifying matches being played within 100 miles of Cardiff. Yugoslavia went on to finish third in the 1980 tournament. The following year, Wales defeated England on English soil for the first time in 42 years and secured their only victory to date at Wembley Stadium thanks to a Leighton James penalty. Another notable achievement came in the 1980 British Home Championship, as Wales comprehensively defeated England at the racecourse ground, Wrexham. Goals from Mickey Thomas, Ian Walsh, Leighton James and an own goal by Phil Thompson saw Wales defeat England 4-1 just four days after England had defeated the then world champions, Argentina. 1980s In the 1982 FIFA World Cup qualifiers the Wales team managed by Mike England came extremely close to qualification, a 3-0 defeat against the Soviet Union in their final match meant they missed out on goal difference, but the real damage had been done by their failure to beat Iceland in their last home match, the match eventually finishing 2-2 after several hold-ups due to floodlight failures. Mark Hughes marked his debut for Wales by scoring the only goal of the match as England were defeated once again in 1984. The following season, Hughes was again on target, scoring a wonder goal as Wales thrashed Spain 3-0 at the racecourse during qualification for the 1986 World Cup. However, despite defeating Scotland 1-0 at Hampton Park, it was again Iceland that wrecked Welsh hopes by defeating Wales 1-0 in Reykjavik, and for the second World Cup in a row, Wales missed out on goal difference. Wales had to win their last match at home to Scotland to be guaranteed at least a playoff, but were held to a 1-1 draw in a match marred by the death of Scotland manager Jock Stein, who collapsed from a heart attack at the end of the match. 1990s Under Terry Yorath, Wales attained what was then their highest FIFA world ranking on 27 August 1993. Again Wales came close to qualifying for a major championship when they came within a whisker of reaching the 1994 World Cup. Needing to win the final match of the group at home to Romania, Paul Bowden missed a penalty when the scores were level 1-2-1, the miss was immediately followed by Romania taking the lead and going on to win 2-2-1. Following the failure to qualify, Yorath's contract as manager of the national side was not renewed by the FAO, and John Toshak, the then manager of Real Sociedad, was appointed on a part-time basis. However, Toshak resigned after just one match—a 3-1 defeat to Norway— 
Citing problems with the FAO as his reason for leaving, although he was sure to have been shocked at being booed off the pitch at Ninian Park by the Welsh fans still reeling from the dismissal of Yorath. Mike Smith took the manager role for the second time at the start of the Euro 1996 qualifiers, but Wales slipped to embarrassing defeats against Moldova and Georgia before Bobby Gould was appointed in June 1995. Gould's time in charge of Wales is seen as a dark period by Welsh football fans. His questionable tactics and public fallings out with players Nathan Blake, Robbie Savage and Mark Hughes, coupled with embarrassing defeats to club side Leighton Orient and a 7-1 thrashing by the Netherlands in 1996 did not make him a popular figure within Wales. Gould finally resigned following a 4-0 defeat to Italy in 1999, and the FAO turned to two legends of the national team, Neville Southall and Mark Hughes, to take temporary charge of the match against Denmark four days later, with Hughes later being appointed on a permanent basis. <laughs> 2000s Under Mark Hughes, Wales came close to qualifying for a place at Euro 2004 in Portugal, being narrowly defeated by Russia in the playoffs. However, the defeat was not without its controversy, as Russian midfielder Yegor Titov tested positive for the use of a banned substance after the first qualifying leg, a scoreless draw in Moscow. Notwithstanding, FIFA opted not to take action against the Football Union of Russia other than instructing them not to field Titov again, and the Russian team went on to defeat Wales 1-0 in Cardiff to qualify for the final tournament. Following a disappointing start to 2006 FIFA World Cup qualification, UEFA Group 6, Hughes left his role with the national team to take over as manager of English Premier League outfit Blackburn Rovers. On 12 November 2004, John Toshak was appointed manager for the second time. In Euro 2008 qualifying, Wales were drawn in Group D alongside Germany, the Czech Republic, Slovakia, the Republic of Ireland, Cyprus and San Marino. The team's performance was disappointing, finishing fifth in the group with expected defeat at home to Germany yet an unexpected draw away, a loss away and a goalless draw at home to the Czech Republic, a loss away and 2-2 draw at home to the Republic of Ireland, a 3-0 home win and uninspiring 2-1 away win against Minos San Marino, a 3-1 home win and 3-1 away defeat against Cyprus, and a spectacularly mixed performance against Slovakia, losing 5-1 at home and winning 5-2 to two away. However, better performances towards the end of the competition by a team containing of necessity because of injuries and suspensions of senior players no fewer than five players who were eligible for selection for the under 21 squad was viewed as a hopeful sign of future progress for the team. In 2010 FIFA World Cup qualification, UEFA Group 4, Wales made a promising start, winning 1 0 and 2 0 against Azerbaijan and Liechtenstein, respectively. However, they lost their next match against Russia in Moscow, 2-1, after Joe Ledley had briefly drawn them level. The qualifying campaign showed signs of promise when the team managed to prevent Germany from scoring for 74 minutes of their match in Mönchengladbach, although Wales ultimately lost 1-0. Two 2-0 home defeats by Finland and Germany in spring 2009 effectively put paid to Wales's hopes of qualification. Wales were drawn in UEFA Euro 2012 qualifying Group G with Montenegro, Bulgaria, Switzerland and close rivals England. Wales lost 1-0 away to Montenegro in their opening match and, on 9 September 2010, John Toshak stood down as manager after being disappointed at previous results in 2010 against Croatia and the opening Euro 2012 qualifier. Wales under-21 coach Brian Flynn took over from Toshak as caretaker manager with a view to a possible permanent appointment, but a 1-0 home defeat to Bulgaria and 4-1 away loss to Switzerland prompted the FAO to pass over Flynn. Topic 2010s. Gary Speed was appointed as permanent manager on the 14th of December 2010. Speed's first match as manager was the 8th of February 2011 in the inaugural Nations Cup, which the Republic of Ireland won 3-0. Speed's first competitive match was the Euro 2012 qualifier at home to England on 26 March 2011, and Speed appointed 20-year-old Aaron Ramsey captain, making him the youngest Wales captain. Wales lost to England 2-0 and in August 2011 Wales attained their lowest FIFA ranking of 117th. 
This was followed by a 2–1 home win against Montenegro, a 1–0 away loss to England, a 2–0 home win against Switzerland and a 1–0 away win against Bulgaria. Consequently, in October 2011, Wales had rapidly risen to 45th in the FIFA rankings. A 4–1 home win in a friendly match against Norway on 12 November 2011 proved to be Speed's last match in charge of Wales. The match was a culmination of Speed's efforts which led Wales to receive the unofficial award for biggest mover of 2011 in the FIFA rankings. His tenure as manager ended in tragic circumstances two weeks later when he was found dead at his home on 27 November, having apparently committed suicide. Due to London's successful bid for the 2012 Summer Olympics, a Great Britain team would qualify as of right of being the host nation. However, the FAO stressed it was strongly against the proposal. Despite this, Welsh players Aaron Ramsey and Gareth Bale expressed their interest in representing the Great Britain Olympic football team. Bale was ultimately omitted due to injury, but Ramsey was joined by four other Welshmen in Stuart Pearce's 18-man squad, Swansea City's Joe Allen and Neil Taylor, while Manchester United's Ryan Giggs and Liverpool's Craig Bellamy were included as over-age players, with Giggs being made captain. Chris Coleman was appointed Wales team manager on 19 January 2012. For 2014 World Cup qualification, Wales were drawn in Group A with Croatia, Serbia, Belgium, Scotland and Macedonia. They lost their first match 2-0, against Belgium. Their second match, against Serbia, was even worse, finishing 6-1, Wales's worst defeat since the 7-1 reversal to the Netherlands in 1996. In October 2012, Ashley Williams was appointed captain of Wales by Coleman, replacing Aaron Ramsey. Wales won at home against Scotland 2-1, lost away to Croatia 2-0 and won away against Scotland 2-1, but a 2-1 loss at home to Croatia ended Wales' hopes of qualifying. Wales were placed in Group B for qualifying for Euro 2016 alongside Andorra, Belgium, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Cyprus and Israel. In July 2015, following four wins and two draws, Wales topped the group. In July 2015, having attained their then highest FIFA ranking of 10th, Wales were placed among the top seeds for the 2018 FIFA World Cup qualification draw. Wales were drawn in Group D with Austria, Serbia, the Republic of Ireland, Moldova, and Georgia. In September 2015, England dropped to 10th in the FIFA rankings, making Wales in the 9th position the highest ranked British team for the first time in its history. In October 2015, Wales attained their highest ever FIFA ranking of 8th. On 10 October 2015, Wales lost 2-0 to Bosnia and Herzegovina. However, Wales's qualification for Euro 2016 was confirmed after Cyprus defeated Israel that same evening. Topic. Euro 2016 Wales had qualified for Euro 2016 in France, their first European Championship tournament, and were drawn into Group B with Slovakia, Russia and England. On their Euro debut, on the 11th of June against Slovakia at the Nouveau Stade de Bordeaux, Gareth Bale scored direct from a free kick to give Wales a 1-0 lead, and Hal robson Kanu scored the winner in a 2-1 victory that put them top of the group. In their second match, against England in Lens, Wales led 1-0 at half-time through another bail free kick, but lost 2-1. Against Russia at the Stadium Municipal in Toulouse, Aaron Ramsey, Neil Taylor and Bale scored in a 3-0 win that made them win the group. In their round of 16 match at the Parc des Princes in Paris, Wales played Northern Ireland and won 1-0 after Bale's cross was put in as an own goal by Gareth McCauley. In the quarter-final against Belgium, Wales, the last remaining British team went behind to a long range effort from Raja Nyngolan, but captain Ashley Williams headed an equaliser before Hal Robson Kanu and Sam Vokes confirmed a 3 1 victory for Wales. This victory advanced Wales to their first major tournament semi final and also made them the first British nation to advance to the semi finals of a major tournament since England did so at Euro 1996 as hosts. The first half of the semi final against Portugal in Lyon went goalless, but goals from Cristiano Ronaldo and Nani early in the second half saw Portugal claim a 2 0 win. Wales were welcomed back home on 8 July with an open-top bus parade around Cardiff, starting at Cardiff Castle and going past the Millennium Stadium before finishing at the Cardiff City Stadium. Topic: 
2018 FIFA World Cup qualifiers In September 2016, Wales opened their 2018 World Cup qualification campaign with a comfortable 4–0 home win against Moldova. However, they followed this with a run of five consecutive draws away to Austria, at home to Georgia, both home and away against Serbia and away to the Republic of Ireland. That run came to an end with a 1–0 home victory over Austria on 2 September 2017, followed by a 2–0 away victory against Moldova on 5 September and a 1–0 away win over Georgia on 6 October. Wales finished third in their group due to a 1–0 loss to the Republic of Ireland on 9 October and failed to qualify for the final tournament in Russia. Chris Coleman resigned as Wales team manager on the 17th of November 2017 and was appointed team manager at Sunderland after nearly 2 months of managerial vacancy. Former Wales national player Ryan Giggs was named Wales's new manager. Giggs, who signed a 4-year contract, would be charged with leading Wales's preparations for the start of the 2018-19 UEFA Nations League in September 2018 and qualification for Euro 2020. Stadium From 2000 to 2009, Wales played most of their home matches at the Millennium Stadium, Cardiff. The stadium was built in 1999 on the site of the old national stadium, known as Cardiff Arms Park, as the Welsh Rugby Union had been chosen to host the 1999 Rugby World Cup. Prior to 1989, Wales played their home games at the grounds of Cardiff City, Swansea City and Wrexham, but then came to an agreement with the WRU to use Cardiff Arms Park and, subsequently, the Millennium Stadium. Wales's first football match at the Millennium Stadium was against Finland on 29 March 2000. The Finns won the match 2-1, with Jari Litmanen becoming the first player to score a goal at the stadium. Ryan Giggs scored Wales's goal in the match, becoming the first Welshman to score at the stadium. With the opening of the Cardiff City Stadium in 2009, the FAO chose to stage most home friendlies there, with other friendly matches played at the Liberty Stadium in Swansea and the Racecourse Ground in Wrexham. Qualifying matches continued to be played at the 74,500 capacity Millennium Stadium until the end of 2009, which was typically only around 20 to 40 percent full amid poor team results. This led to calls from fans and players for international matches to be held at smaller stadiums. For the Euro 2012 qualifying campaign, the FAO decided Wales would play all of their home matches at either the Cardiff City Stadium or the Liberty Stadium, with the exception of the home tie against England, which was played at the Millennium Stadium. The 2014 World Cup qualifying campaign saw four home matches at the Cardiff City Stadium and one at the Liberty Stadium. Cardiff City Stadium's capacity was increased to 33,000 in 2014 and all home matches for Euro 2016 qualifying were scheduled at the stadium and Wales subsequently qualified for the finals tournament in France. All five home qualifiers for the 2018 FIFA World Cup qualification UEFA were held at the stadium. Both of the team's home UEFA Nations League 2018 home games are scheduled to take place at the Cardiff City Stadium, together with all home games in the Euro 2020 qualifying campaign, however a friendly against Spain will take place at the Principality Stadium in October 2018 which will be Wales's first match at the stadium in just over seven and a half years. <laughs> Players. Topic. Current squad The following 25 players were called up for the UEFA Nations League match against Denmark on 16 November 2018 and the friendly against Albania on 20 November 2018. Following the match against Denmark James Chester, Paul Dummett and Ethan Ampadu returned to their respective clubs. Subsequently, Rabbi Matondo was called up to the senior squad for the first time. Caps and goals updated as of the 20th of November 2018 after the match against Albania. Topic: Recent call-ups. The following players have been called up for the Wales squad in the last 12 months. Topic: Most capped players. 
As of the 20th of November 2018, players still active in bold. Topic: <laughs> Players with 50 or more caps. Wales present a golden cap to players attaining 50 international caps. See list of Wales international footballers. Current players with 50 or more caps. Topic: Top goalscorers. As of the 20th of November 2018, players still active in bold. Topic: Notable former players Welsh Sports Hall of Fame inductees Welsh inductees to the English Football Hall of Fame 2002 John Charles 2005 Ryan Giggs 2006 Ian Rush 2007 Mark Hughes, Billy Meredith 2013 Cliff Jones 2015 Ivor Allchurch 2016 Neville Southall 2017 Gary Speedwelsh inductees to the Football League 100 Legends Welsh winners of the Football Writers Footballer of the Year Ian Rush 1984 Neville Southall 1985 Gareth Bale 2013 Welsh winners of the PFA Players Player of the Year Ian Rush 1984 Mark Hughes 1989 1991 Ryan Giggs 2009 Gareth Bale 2011 2013 Welsh inductee to the PFA team of the year top division Leighton James 1975 John Toshak 1976 Ian Rush 1983 1984 1985 1987 1991 Kevin Ratcliffe 1985 Mark Hughes 1986, 1989, 1991, 1992 Neville Southall 1987, 1988, 1989, 1990 Gary Speed 1993 Ryan Giggs 1993, 1998, 2001, 2002, 2007, 2009 Gareth Bale 2011, 2012, 2013 Topic. Results and fixtures Win Draw Loss Topic. 2018 Topic. 2019 Topic Team Image Topic Media Coverage Live television broadcast rights are held by S4C Welsh Language Commentary and Sky Sports English Language Commentary until twenty twenty two. Topic Colors and logo The primary kit has long been all red. The crest of the Football Association of Wales features a Welsh dragon on a white shield surrounded by 11 daffodils on a green background, and, since 1951, the Welsh language motto Gorau Core Sid Core The best play is team play. <laughs> kit supplier Topic Managers Prior to 1954, the Welsh team was chosen by a panel of selectors with the team captain fulfilling the role of coach. Topic Backroom staff Topic Records Topic Tournament History
Topic: <laughs> FIFA World Cup record. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> UEFA European Championship. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> UEFA Nations League record. Topic: British Home Championship. Winners: 12, 1907, 1920, 1923-24, 1927-28, 1932-33, 1933-34, 1936-37, 1938-39, shared, 1951-52, shared, 1955-56, shared, 1959-60, shared, 1969-70, shared. <laughs> 